there's nothing like doing a video and then realizing you forgot to connect your mic. Uh, I, had, I was literally almost done with this video. And then I kind of peeked down at my mic and I'm like, damn it, I forgot to plug in the mic. And it's just because when I want to listen to videos, I have to plug in my other headset because, like I said before, I had two different computers. Now, of course, many people view many of the states, you know, red states like Florida and Texas, and they're like <clears throat> holding down freedom. And then you see stuff like this. Florida landlord requires proof of the poke for tenants. This is a Florida landlord will require all new and existing tenants to show proof of whether they are pro-regime. It says, as of August 15th, Santiago Alvarez, who owns eight apartment buildings in Broward and Miami-Dade counties, will mandate that tenants prove that they are for the regime and they got to show show me your papers, right? So this, this doesn't surprise me to see individuals do it. Of course, people can do what they like. But moving forward, you know, will the government work with such individuals? Will the government give people incentives might they give me a little kickback right or give you a little incentive uh to kind of push these people in the right direction right we need these people to, to take it uh because that's what our goal is regardless of the science we're not here to talk about the science i've done numerous videos talking about this but this is what tyranny looks like this is what the founding fathers spoke in depthly about this is what the founding fathers envisioned when they said that you have the right to bear arms more importantly you have the right to utilize and the responsibility to utilize those arms to protect your freedom it was the most important gift uh, that the founding fathers had fought for and it is as they have said on numerous uh, times when you read many of the different documents that a lot of these um, principles and concepts that were that were set forth were based off of the reality that there is a creator and that all men are created equal and as a result all men of course are free because the creator uh, has endowed people with un inalienable rights and so your the government is trying to see as I, and i've said this in numerous videos that the moment that your leadership acts in a way that shows no regard for a creator well then neither do you have such rights or right? you say oh you know there's a creator we have all these rights for free these are the documents it doesn't matter if, if the people who you put in charge do not believe in a god by their actions well then neither do you have such freedom because that freedom can only be upheld as if you're willing to put life on the line and you're willing in essence to drop bodies to show that you are putting you're, you're willing to fight for your freedom you see it in other countries, you really don't see it in America. And again, people think, you know, because America has all these guns, America has like 45% of all the guns that are held in the hands of individuals, you know, in the whole globe. You compare all the guns in, 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 the, in, the, in the planet, 45% of them are held in the hands of the American people. And yet you don't see the American people even attempting. That's basically what the sixth was in terms of what they did with the outcome putting all these people in jail locking them up throwing away the key you know gaslighting talking about it worse than the civil war or you know worse than slavery you know all this bullshit and it's because it's there to make you afraid that if you stand up well that's going to happen to you and it worked you haven't seen you know from two weeks to slow the spread where were the americans that valued freedom they were like we're not going to shut everything down. I'm not going to let you shut my business down. I'm not going to stay home because you tell me to stay home because because I'm a, I'm a free person. I'm a free man and I'm willing to fight for it. See, if Americans had done that, it would have been a completely different story. But because you had your boy in the White House, you let your guard down. You thought that this person had your back and look how it turned out. Right? Like I said in a previous video, it's just good cop, bad cop. This guy went in there and either he was on your side, but at the end of the day, he didn't have the balls to say, you know what, we're willing to go all the way on this one. And if he had done that, if he had gone that route, we would be in a different predicament. But now you don't see anybody, anybody trying to put up any sort of a fight 
no matter what it is, doesn't matter what, what politician, you know, even when you look at DeSantis and you look at Abbott, not really pushing back as much as is needed. And of course, it shows with what's going on in Florida. As he says, if you don't want to take it, well, he says you got to move out. 80-year-old Alvarez told the Washington Post, and if you don't move, well, we're going to evict you. Says Alvarez said, he said, I'm going to give you a little time. We'll do the little exemption thing, just kind of like what they're doing here in the hospitals. We'll give you an exemption, and if I really don't like your exemption, well, you got to go. I'm going to put you out on the street. You don't have to pay rent, right? The government say you don't have to pay rent. They won't evict you. But if you're, but this, the government will be in favor for because this is the narrative. And so for me, I've said for already quite some time that my line in the sand or my goal is to flee the country. It's very much like what Jesus said. When you see all these things taking place, he said, flee to the mountains. So you may have to leave behind this cushy sort of a lifestyle, or you may have to go deep into the country and hope that the government will leave you alone but you need a way to support yourself and you're going to have to leave behind much of the um, modern day things that we take for granted like having a smartphone internet access you know etc because everything is going to be tied in some way shape or form to your cell phone just like you got to show the the pass uh, to in New York to get into all these different eateries and events, right? You got to show it on your cell phone, and this is this is the route that they're gonna go. Just like in Australia, where they're like literally following you, you got to do like a facial recognition on your cell phone and text back to the government, "This is where I am," and show a little a picture of yourself where you're at, so they can uh, geolocate you. This is where we're at, and because people don't want to push back in the way that is needed. Protests, hey, protests are great. Protests are not going to get you where you need to go. People thinking that you're just going to march out there, you're going to have a little, uh, you know, a little stick in your hand with a little a placard, you know, saying you know, no vaccine or whatever it is. That's not going to cut it. Not not today. That might have worked for something else, maybe a couple of decades ago. Not not today. This is an all. Or nothing scenario. Either you're all in for either you're all in for your freedom and you're gonna fight to the death, or you're gonna be a slave. That's just a reality of where we're at. Or you can be like, you know what? I'm not gonna be a part of any of this, and I'm gonna dip and hope the best and make a life somewhere else. Article goes on to say it says the news from Florida comes after President Biden announces a new rule, right? About anybody with a hundred or more employees, you gotta take it. And if they don't take it, well, you can't work. And this is where we are at. A lot of people think if someone's going to ride in on a white horse and save him, the courts are going to uphold it. It's not going to happen. You got to get that shit out of your mind. And you need to prepare and act accordingly. Which means, like I've said before, if you're a skilled individual, the best thing you can do in a scenario like this is to starve people of your labor and to starve them of your skill. If you're a skilled individual, I would take my skill to another country. Buy land somewhere else. Find some people that you can collaborate with and start your own business and start your own business abroad. This will not impact every single country. I know people think it's going to every single country is going to be impacted. There are already countries that are not going this route. You look at China, even China isn't uh, pushing for, you know, mandating, mandating this. Neither is places like Russia. And you've got other um countries that are just like we're just completely getting rid of all the restrictions altogether i think it was in uh in denmark denmark just literally like you know we're gonna drop all these restrictions no point uh and they've seen their cases completely disappear because it has nothing to do with the science article goes on to state it says at least one tenant 20 years old had filed a complaint with the florida department of agriculture and consumer services it says irby argued that she should uh, be able to renew her lease without having to disclose her personal health information. It says Irby's attorney also wrote to Alvarez saying that his policy was in violation of Ron DeSantis' executive order, prohibiting businesses from making policies that require people to take it as a condition of entering. However, the landlord believes his policy is not in violation of the governor's order as the order is intended for customers or patrons. And of course, you know, they're just going to pick apart the wording. Everybody knows what Governor DeSantis meant when he put that into place. Basically just stating that you can't uh, force people to take it. And it says the law is very clear. He says you cannot require uh, for people to take it. 
or for passports as a condition of entry. Each violation of the law will result in a $5,000 fine, according to DeSantis. And it says the idea of requiring a passport is unscientific and will not achieve lower cases. And that's, again, this is what Governor DeSantis um, and these people don't understand is that it has nothing to do with the disease. It has everything to do with getting people on that little Ferris wheel. You need to get people on the treadmill. That's the whole point. You got to get people on the treadmill. They did it in Israel. And you see where Israel is at now from well, just take it. We're going to go back to normal. So all you need a booster. All you need a booster every six months. And eventually those boosters will start to whittle down from six months to three months to two months, etc. And this is basically where we're at. So you have to prepare accordingly, which is exactly what I am doing. I already know what my long-term goals is. And of course, my short-term goals are working in that direction, trying to gather up as much coin as I can to make my exit, pick an area where I think there's relative freedom, uh, or at the very least, where I know the people will push back. Um, you have to go where people value freedom. Now, in those areas, because they're typically going to be patriarchal societies, they're going to be a little bit more dangerous and you have to prepare accordingly. But basically going to leave it there this is basically where we're at people thinking that everything is going to end well and that you know somebody is going to come in the courts are going to do the right thing it's not going to happen it's not going to happen and if you wait for it you will be caught flat-footed you will be caught in a bad predicament and of course that isn't what we want we want to be able to be prepared and we want to be able to make good decisions for ourselves and for your families etc but i'm going to leave it here of course thanks for watching and i'll catch you next time